and hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill, I'm Joey Tysick, and we are once again deep into the thick of football season. Uh, lots to talk about today in college and NFL. Um, but we wanted to uh, start out with uh, Team USA in the FIBA World Cup for basketball. Uh, maybe Noel Lyles was correct. Maybe the NBA championship doesn't mean anything. How about Dennis Schroeder being the best player in the world, Joey? How do you feel about that? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. He's the world MVP. What do you mean? Oh, boy. <laughs> you didn't see it? Well, and now people are starting to talk about uh, Franz Wagner being maybe best in his class and all that kind of stuff for draft picks. And Franz is very good. He's, he's very good. But uh, I, I wouldn't go that far just yet. Um, yeah, another disappointing, I mean, double loss for Team USA. Didn't even medal. It, it's just ugly. They lost to Canada um, for the third, third place game. Um, and previously they, uh, lost to Germany and even early on, they lost to Lithuania and I don't know, everybody has the, the biggest, um, excuse in the book that we didn't bring our best players, blah, 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 blah. These players should have been able to get it done. I don't know if you saw Jaron Jackson's, uh, stat line. It was bad for, he had like five rebounds and like. Yeah, a hundred plus minutes of for, basketball for the league's defensive player of the year. I don't know why it is that it seems like when the stars come and play in the Olympics, like the top guys, for some reason they're able to play team basketball. But when the secondary stars, well, like, they they were able to play team basketball for like the first five games. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, things started getting tough, and it just yeah. I just, I don't get it. And then the other thing that I hate is people like start pointing to Steve Kerr about his rotations and all that stuff. Just play ball at that point. Like, I mean, that's kind of why they lost in the Olympics. That's kind of why they lost because they just started playing ball. But like, it's my, my whole thing of like blaming the coach and all that. Like these are the best players in the world. I have to I have to disagree with you on the just play ball thing because I don't think, especially with a C team, which is basically what they were, Anthony Edwards is above C team, but the rest of the team are they're up and comers and yeah. The other t- the other countries, the rest of the teams you're playing, most of them have been playing together for at least like some of them maybe like three, four years, some of them almost a decade plus. Like, these guys have come through their country's system, and they've been playing together since they were teenagers. That's kind of what, why they did what they did with the Redeem team in 2008, where they put a roster together, like, two years prior mm-hmm. and made them, like, stick together, like, through two summers to learn how to play together and be the best team possible. You can't just play ball against other countries doing that. Yeah. And I guess I don't even mean it, like – just go mess around but like these guys know how to play you can't tell me that team usa's lineup does not look 10 times better than any other world lineup even team canada who probably has they the didn't next, look 10 times better than canada. who has the next best roster no they, i know but they should they still have talent <laughs> on paper like on paper i'm saying like if you look up and down team usa's roster compared to team canada <laughs> I think it's I think it's more even than you think. It's the C team, but it doesn't like it's the C team of Team USA. Shea Gilgis Alexander is a superstar. He yes. would be the best team on Team USA. Possibly. Yes, possibly. Yeah. Anthony Edwards is on his way. Shea Gilgis has kicked the door through pretty much. Who else? Like Austin Reeves, is he the second best player on on Canada to you? Dylan Brooks went for forty. Yeah, see that's Dylan the other. Went for that's the other problem. But also, people people forget because he decided to become a villain, and that kind of diminished what he did on the court. Before all that, he was a very talented player. Yeah. He is a talented player, and that's the other thing, though. Like, because Dylan Brooks is the way that he is, he's at least going to take every game seriously, and that's why he was able to, like, dice up Team USA. 
But, like, I just don't, like, Jaron Jackson is supposed to be the defensive player of the year. Brandon Ingram is supposed to be that guy that's on the cusp that's never fully Brandon break, Ingram, broken through. He was it, it was obvious he was never in tune from like the jump. Brandon yeah. Ingram was he it seemed like he wasn't mentally there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's so disappointing. He, to me, he's Brandon Ingram isn't a team USA type to me. Yeah. It is kind of weird that they brought him in, in my opinion. But even still, like, he should be a guy that just can go get a bucket against anybody. Not when you don't care. <laughs> he can do it night in and night out at the in the NBA. Like what's I don't I don't get it. Same with like a guy like Jalen Brunson. Like you're a big Jalen Brunson fan, but like he's I, th- not- I think he had a hard time just gelling with everybody on the court. And e- even though they they looked really good in those first like five four or five games, mm-hmm. something just stopped clicking with the team. Yeah, like Team Canada's lineup: Shea, R.J. Barrett, Dylan Brooks. Lou Dort, Dwight Powell. Besides Shea, like they're all I'd take Lou Dort over several players they're on all that good USA roster. Starting players. I'd take Lou Dort over most of the players on the USA roster. Tech in my opinion. Now I don't fully love the Josh Hart thing. I get it because he's he's kind of He's that, a role player. Yeah, yeah, he's he's kind of that glue guy, I guess. But Bobby I, Portis I either. You could have got a well, you could have yeah. got a better big than Bobby Portis. Yeah. Like they they should have played Walker Kessler more because he probably would have averaged ten rebounds. <laughs> That's yeah. one thing Walker Kessler is going to do. He's going to block shots and rebound. Yeah. And Jaron, I don't know. Some something was off with him. Oh, did Brandon Ingram and Jaron Jackson just didn't even play in that game against Canada? See, I I didn't watch the highlights of like their last three games. So that's uh, yeah. I saw they lost and I was like, oh, things are just going bad. It's just it's just a mess, to be honest. I but I don't get it. Saying all of that, it appears that help is on the way. I guess so. And the world's greatest superheroes are coming together. You don't seem excited. <laughs> Do you want Team USA to win the gold? Yeah, but I mean, the problem I'm, is it's I'm, gonna. I'm not super like overly excited I, either, but. I think it's pretty cool that all these guys are going to come together. Yeah, it's it's always to cool to try and show that, like, yeah, yeah, and and it makes sense. I I said it in our group chat, like, this is going to be LeBron's final Olympic game unless he wants to be Tom Brady out there in uh, what would that be? Twenty twenty eight. He could be forty five. That's not happening. But uh, this is last Olympics. Yeah, so it's it's a good going out party for him. But the problem that I have is like. We made such a big deal about the Redeem team, and that was like a cool moment in time. So we have the Dream team. That, then you have that's the Redeem my team, USA, the Redeem team. And then you have the Redeem team. So, like, there's cool moments in time. And the Redeem team was, like, perfect because we had lost in the Olympics before. We lost, like, two they years They lost in FIBA, FIBA after two. Yeah. And then, then they came in. Like, this is after kind of one down FIBA tournament that they're going to save the whole – country in basketball it it doesn't have the same flash in the pan to me and it's just kind of a like they're trying to make a storyline out of just a bad performance i guess i mean that is a storyline <laughs> whenever team usa doesn't show up in basketball it is going to be a major storyline yeah because that's the expectation right but they're just going to make it into a bigger deal that oh man they came back and won well they should have won in the first place that's my whole point, I guess. As they they should have been they should have been fine from the get go, um, but it, it'll be fun. Uh, has has Steph played for the Olympics? He played FIBA, but he never he's never played in the Olympics. Okay, because supposedly he's yeah. locked in to play. Same with Devin Booker, a lot of the big name guys, Kyrie, yeah. whoever LeBron asks for the most part, they're coming. Yeah, which which that will be cool. I I can't yeah. be too hard on it, but. I think people are going to be overreactionary as usual, but it'll be one of the only times I'm excited to see Draymond <laughs> because he's going to be the tone setter, and I want to see him do something like Kobe did when they played Spain in '08, when he just ran through Pau Gasol. Was it Pau Gasol or two? Who was it? Uh, Mark was it Mark? I can't remember. He Kobe, ran through Kobe ran the, over Pau. Yeah, he just ran through him. Yeah, and everybody was like, "We can't believe he did that." Mm-hmm. I think Draymond is definitely doing something like that in these Olympics. Yeah, he's going to get kicked out. 
just setting a tone, and he's gonna be El- just Can ex- you- through the moon. I mean, on the moon that he. Are he- we able to bring Carmelo? <laughs> no. Come on. He's one of the best Olympic Listen, players of he, all time. If he wants to be an assistant coach, yes. <laughs> We're not bringing him out of retirement for the last, last, last dance. <laughs> we can't do that. Come on. All right. Okay, enough about basketball. We'll get to the regular season in a couple months here. Uh, actually, it's like less than a month. Preseason starts next month. Ugh. Yeah. Um, college football. We got some updates. Michigan. Same uh, old, no, yeah. Another toss in Same the pan. Same thing as week one. They're playing Bowling Green. This week, uh, yeah. they took care of business last week. It is, a, it is almost an exact replica of the first game, mm-hmm. except they got some pressure and some sacks, which was really nice to see. Yeah. But yeah, J.J. looked really good. The running game was still inconsistent, but the running yeah. backs still look good. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that's kind of the still one, like, question mark for Michigan right now is their running game. Yeah. And there are some injuries. To, Will Johnson hasn't played yet. Rod Moore hasn't played yet. Mm-hmm. They're they're pretty banged up in, in some spots. So. Yeah. Yeah, seeing young guys play is pretty cool. Yeah. Meanwhile, at Michigan State, at Michigan State, it's been a week. It's a game they needed. First, let's talk about the game. Yeah. <laughs> they needed a game like that to get some confidence up. Yep. They look good against Richmond. Uh, Nathan Carter came through again. He looks like maybe he can be something. Uh, this will be a big test, though, against Washington this yeah. week. Um, but, yeah, they took care of business against Richmond. Um Again, like you said, confidence booster going into this big game against Washington that uh, we don't expect them to win, but if they can at least look competitive at times, I'll take it. Um, unfortunately, they're dealing with outside uh, influences as well, yeah. as <laughs> Mel Tucker right now is suspended without pay. Um, yeah, the first report that was was that he was fired. Yeah, there and was a lot of change mixed... within like three or four hours. Yeah, there was a lot of mixed reporting on it, um, so it was kind of confusing at first. But Mel Tucker had been found for being in a sexual harassment uh, issue with a colleague that it's, I hate to say the word funny, but funny enough, she is the uh, like it's liaison ironic. Yeah, for it's ironic. Uh, helping athletes with sexual harassment cases yeah. and how to deal with those scenarios. And she, she dealt with her own experience. Yeah. Which, you know, we won't even and. Know. Now, there again, there's been mixed reports to Mel Tucker saying that it was consensual, blah, blah, blah. Mel Tucker pretty much admitting that right, he that did it is like the biggest part of it. Yeah, and him trying to brush it off as a consensual situation and all. That. It doesn't matter. Like, you're going against everything that is in, like, rules of business in general. Like, you don't get into relationships of any He's kind. He's married, isn't he? I, honestly, I don't know. I, I Probably. <laughs> I just assume. But I, I don't know. Um, and that's just a bad business move. It's a dumb move, um, by him, whether or not he's in the right or wrong. It doesn't even matter to be honest. Now there's going to be a hearing in October. I think the first week of October, um, I don't see him getting out of this. It looks like he's just done, um, from everything that I've seen at least so far. Um, and like I said, no matter what the, harassment portion portion of it is whether he's found guilty of that or not i think the problem being of having a relationship in some capacity with this woman already makes it a problem yeah um and it just shows that he just doesn't have any wherewithal of what he's doing um or the repercussions of what he's trying to do or whatever um so it's just a bad look on him and he said some dumb stuff uh to media and things about the whole situation. So I, I feel like he's just not even helping himself out. Um, so right now, Jay Johnson is taking over as the interim coach, I believe. And uh, a familiar face, Mark D'Antonio, is uh, coming back to be an associate coach. I don't know what that means. Nobody knows, but that's what's been reported. So he'll be on the sidelines somewhere. And uh, hopefully, hopefully that's good news. I, I don't know what it means. Um, but I'm hoping that the team doesn't take it as a distraction. Uh, it's hard to say exactly what they're going to do. But um, it is it is what it is, I guess. And it, it stinks that it's on their toughest game of the year, probably, for now. Um, but it, at least, like, people were already starting to get worried about Mel Tucker and 
what his commitment level to the team was, that maybe it's an early early release that they can uh, move on and find a new head coach again already. So, do you have any thoughts on the whole situation or <laughs> you want to talk about the, the Washington game? Uh, I, I really don't know what what position is this program in right now like er- everybody still wait was still waiting for Mel Tucker to like make in make, finally make an impact like with his recruits and everything yeah some fans still had hope some fans started to figure that it wasn't going to happen yeah well and, and other, i guess the other thing sorry to interrupt but the other thing too that i forgot to mention this investigation has been going on since July. So they knew that that was a potential thing. The reason for the suspension is because of the additional information that came out. That's why they decided to suspend him. But they did know that there was an investigation going on to begin with. So that's another weird bit about it. Um, one other thing I guess I'll point out too that I've heard people mention. Tom Izzo was like at the central game and kind of like supporting the team and all that. He was in the Mel Tucker suite or something. I I don't remember exactly. Um, So that's a little bit of a bad look for Tom Izzo too. If the whole athletic department knew the investigation was going on. Now, maybe Tom Izzo is oblivious. Maybe he was, you know, off in his own little land. He didn't know. Uh, That's a fair assumption as well, but it's just, it's weird optics all around. And it's unfortunate that Michigan State keeps getting themselves into this situation. Now, I think they've handled it well since they found out that information, but it's just an an unfortunate event. Um, So, yeah, I'll let you continue. Yeah, but I I was basically asking, like, do you think this program is, like, somewhat on a brink where you could either take a step, another step in a good direction, like Kenneth Walker year, you you go eleven and two. Mm-hmm. Last year, you're worse than you imagined you could have been. You shouldn't have lost that many games. Do you think this year could either like send them in the like straight or go backwards, like in an extreme way? Because um, I I like I don't even know how good of a job this looks like for college football coaches. Yeah, and after this season, like what I I just I I'm so good. I don't know what to think about the MSU program at this moment. Yeah. Like in terms of the team or where they go in the future, whether they're going forward or backward, I just don't know. What are you, what are your thoughts on? I agree. I think where things could go. I do think it's in a, in a tough spot. Um, but I think, you know, just being MSU, one of the better big 10 schools, there's always that draw to wanting to be a head coach for that team. Uh, now I can see it, you know, dwindling a little bit, but I don't know. To me, it's always like if there's a big head coaching job vacancy that there's going to be somebody that wants to turn the program around and be the one responsible for it. Um, in terms of this year, I don't think that it their performance really will affect the outcome of what they do at head coach, in my opinion just for that reason, because I think people know what this team is. I don't think that people think that this team is special per se, but I also don't think that they're like a bad team that couldn't be transformed. Like they're only missing. It it feels like they're only missing a few key pieces here and there, especially if they can figure out like if Noah Kim is the guy, Um, then they, they only have to, you know, do so many things, I think. Um, And now if, if Nathan Carter keeps that up, he's a junior, right? Senior. Is he? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, never mind then. I thought he was maybe a junior in that. I, I can't remember if he was a grad transfer. I know he's a senior. Okay. So that squashes that little point. But at the same time, still, there's little pieces that I think can fix this this team and make them good for the future. Um, I don't know the head coaches that are out there at the moment. I'm never. I mean, they all that. have jobs. Yeah. Like they're they're probably the. I think they'll take a swing at Mike Elko at Duke. Yeah, I, and, that name was one that I've heard. Like, I, I'm not sure if I, – I personally don't want him to jump to Michigan State because I 
What he's doing at Duke is incredible. Mm -hmm. And if he comes to Michigan State, I'd, uh, yeah. I'd, I know how good he is, and that would be scary. I <laughs> I also heard some people just throwing out the name Deion Sanders. <laughs> Listen, man. Which was kind of prime. I, I saw – I saw, I saw a picture on Twitter earlier today of him in a Michigan State hat and a green and white prime hoodie. Yeah. That's not happening, people. <laughs> Let, like, let's stop it. But, like, what? there's also a timeline, like, where they take Matt Campbell from Iowa State. And I don't know if he could, like, make Michigan State more than just, like, another version of Iowa. Mm -hmm. So there, there are so many different ways this could go. When Mel Tucker, we both agree, he'll, he'll probably be eventually fired. So, yeah, it's it's a really weird spot they're in at the moment. Yeah, they got a lot to uh, figure out. And um, like I said, it's not going to make this game any easier. But it also could, you know, take the weight off the, the pressure of this game and they just go in there with kind of a carefree attitude. Or you could make Jay Johnson permanent head coach. That would make MSU fans happy. Very happy. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, if he gets oh, through, I'm the, kidding. If, I mean, MSU if, fans would be extremely upset if that happened. I mean, realistically, if he could get through the season and like figure something out, win a couple of games, like MSU fans are quick to turn around. Remember when Mel Tucker was all the hype, and then people quickly died out on that. Yeah. So. Tuck coming. Yeah. Um. All right. That's enough Michigan. Michigan State talk again. Not too many crazy games. Um. And there are not too many crazy games on the slate either. We looked at it before. There's uh, only a couple notable games, and then next week is kind of the the big week where we got lots of yeah. uh, interconference play. Um, so just looking at the rankings real quick, we got Georgia still at one, Michigan two, Florida State three, Texas moved up to four, USC is five, Ohio State six, Penn State seven, Washington, Notre Dame, and Alabama – with their loss to Texas, is down seven spots. Mm -hmm. So I bring up the question again with the reality check of a couple teams, and we have to talk about the Texas Longhorns. Are they real, Malik, or are they fake? They beat Alabama, but we know Alabama was going to have some concerns this year. Even though this was an Alabama team that some people weren't all the way in on, they needed this win. And them getting this win is a sign of things being possible that Texas fans haven't seen mm -hmm. in a long time. You have a quarterback that can do some special things. You have skill talent that can do special things. You have de defensive players. You have guys all over the field at all positions that can make high-level plays against high-level programs. Yeah, That alone is a return to something Texas hasn't had in over a decade. Mm-hmm. This is the first time Steve Sarkeesian has had a, has gotten a win like this as a head coach. Yeah. So that's a breakthrough. I mean, it's it's a preview of things to come for the SEC. Like the Texas student section mm -hmm. and the crowd overall was chanting was chanting SEC after they won the game. It it is it's a, it's a very big thing for Texas. Now, they can still have a slip up in conference play <laughs> because Texas has been known to do that. Yeah. But I am I, I believe in this Texas team. And I, I said in our preview of Texas that this is the first time since like two thousand nine when Colt McCoy was at Texas mm -hmm. that I look at the roster and I see players at every position that are for, for real. Yeah. Like this isn't like mid to late two thousands Texas where you have a few standout players and then a bunch of guys that have talent but aren't really good football players. Mm -hmm. You have serious football players all over the place. And Steve Sarkeesian knows what to do with them, it seems. Yeah. So, yeah, Texas, they can't be taken lightly, at least for the season. Yeah. But, yeah, Steve Sarkeesian has done, has done an incredible job recruiting and putting players in the positions they need to be in mm -hmm. to make plays. Yeah. And it all came together. Yeah, in Tuscaloosa last weekend. Yeah, they they looked good, and I think I mentioned it last week. They got Arch Manning there too, so they could have a while where they're back in contention every year. Yeah. Um. Okay. My second reality check is kind of a a combo question because we've just seen UCLA and Washington State make it into the top twenty-five. 
There are eight Pac-12 teams in the top 20 top. You want to talk about humor? The Pac-12 is going to be dead in a season. I know. And they're the best conference in football right now. And are they real? Yes. Or are they fake? They're real. Like It's not a joke. <laughs> they they are the conference of quarterbacks. Yeah. Shador Sanders has arrived. Colorado is slightly for real. Mm-hmm. UCLA has Dante Moore. He's coming into his own. Oregon State has DJ, DJ Uyunglele. They play tough football. Yep. Washington State has – you look up and down the con- – Cal almost beat Auburn. Yeah. And, like, they don't look like a joke. Mm-hmm. Top to bottom in the Pac-12, there are great, good, and solid teams. And they're they're going to be gone <laughs> in yeah. this season. It, it is insane. What a going out party. And, like, the Pac-12 is still undefeated in, like, non-conference games. The SEC is three and six. Yeah. Like, you look at what the Pac-12 has in quarterbacks and skill talent and what this year's SEC has in quarterbacks and skill talent, it is shocking. Yeah. Like, it, it is a very huge difference, mm-hmm. and that hasn't happened lately. Yeah. Now, it's unfortunate. Next week, they will be beating up on each other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Next week is when the madness starts. We have uh, Colorado, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington State, UCLA, Utah, so those those teams are going to go down. Yeah. Um, a bunch of great games. It's going to be a really great Saturday. Yeah. But uh, it will be real interesting when we get to week four. Um, and for our final reality check, we got the Miami Hurricanes. Big game. Big game this uh, past week. Um, and they, they look good against Texas A&M. Um, are they real or are they fake? They are, they're in the middle. They're interesting. I can't say they're real yet, but they're also not fake because I haven't seen Miami look this fun and interesting probably since Mark Rick, his first season at Miami when they went like 11 and one. Mm-hmm. Tyler Van Dyke looks comfortable again. Uh, they brought in uh, the offensive coordinator from SMU. I think his name is Rhett Lashley. And their offense looks really fun and explosive. Tyler Van Dyke is a really good deep ball thrower. And he put some great touch on a lot of touchdown passes this past weekend. Their skill talent looks improved. I'm a big fan of Xavier Restrepo. Mm -hmm. Their uh, slot receiver, who's a Miami guy. I think he he could be an NFL player because he's such a great receiver. I mean, route runner and has great hands. They made plays on defense. They did give up some some uh, passing yards. They gave up 33 points, so they let Texas A&M have some decent drives. Yeah. But every time they needed to punch back, they punched. Like, they threw knockout punches several times, whether it was a kick return touchdown by Brashard Smith. Like I said, multiple uh, passing touchdowns by Tyler Van Dyke. Mm-hmm. Every time they needed one, they got it. And even though it looks kind of sad at Miami home games because the stadium is never full. Yeah. Like, it, it's almost half full. It looks so strange seeing Miami home games. But that stadium was rocking. Like, mm-hmm. those fans were loud because they were seeing something that they haven't seen in a while. Yeah. Miami going up and down the field, making plays. And it was it was really cool to see. Now, they're not real yet. Like, if they can make it to an ACC championship and yeah. contend for the conference again, mm-hmm. that's when Miami becomes real. Like, everybody is very sure Texas – has a great chance to win the Big 12 in their last season in the conference. Mm-hmm. Still not sure if Miami can just flat out make a run right. to win the conference. But they're interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm watching Miami again. Okay. Yeah. All right. They didn't fall flat on their face like they did last year. Yeah. I was impressed. Um, what's the one game this week that uh, you're keeping your eye on the most? A like we said, there's not too many. But. This week, yes, yeah, not a bunch. Um, Penn State at Illinois will be interesting, but Illinois has looked so up and down these first two weeks. Like, Kansas was really kicking their butts the first half, and then they clawed and scratched their way back to, like, a decent game in the second half of Kansas still. was They looked like the better team. Yeah. Which, good for Kansas. They're still getting better. So, that'll be kind of interesting. Um, Alabama plays at South Florida for some reason. I have no idea yeah. why why that got scheduled, but 
it's it's decent, I guess. Minnesota, North Carolina looks good on paper, but mm-hmm. Minnesota's shown no like explosiveness on offense yet. Yeah. North Carolina should handle that game for the most part. The be- the the most interesting game might be Washington, Michigan State. Like they're hyping up Colorado, Colorado State because of the game day is going to be in Boulder. Right. Yeah. And Dion is just going to be on TV 24 hours. Yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's it's not a amazing <laughs> you you have these lulls during the college football yeah we, honestly it's probably tennessee florida mm-hmm. that's that's a year-round rivalry right where both fan bases are intensely into this game whoever wins this game usually goes on to have the better season and tennessee is favored their offense has been kind of sketchy so far yeah they have a lot of things to patch up they couldn't blow out austin p all the way which is kind of concerning Joe Milton still has those Joe Milton moments, mm-hmm. and Florida they're just trying to they're just trying to find themselves. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're in that place where yeah they're they're just they're looking for something. Right. So the game is in Florida, so the swamp will be bumping. Yeah, it <clears throat> it should be interesting. Mm-hmm. Not sure how many points will be put up on the board. I mean both defense. I mean e- both defenses are. Neither of them are like really good, so there could be, it could be an entertaining game. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll have to see. I'll tell you what. It's a rivalry game. I will not be watching any college football this weekend besides Michigan State and Washington. And let's see if you make it past the first half. Yeah, I, I don't know how long I'll last. Because but. yeah, if, if it's like seventeen to like fourteen or seventeen ten at the end of the first half, mm-hmm. Bravo Michigan State. Yeah, or in Bravo. Business. Now Michigan Washington can still put their foot on the pedal after that. Yeah. And it can end up being like forty two to like twenty four. But I'm at, I'm actually I'm gonna predict that the Washington Michigan State game ends I'm gonna say forty two to twenty four. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a complete embarrassment. I, 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 I think can, I can the, handle that. The team rallies together, Noah Kim. Drops a few deep balls. They get some a few good drives going. But, yeah, ultimately, Washington, they, they have maybe a top three passing offense in the country. Mm-hmm. They have three legit NFL receivers and an NFL quarterback. Yeah. That's that's tough. I won't make a prediction. I'll just let you handle that. Listen, Mi- Michigan State won't get embarrassed. And I'll hope for the best. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And uh, we're through one week of NFL football as well now. Uh some interesting things happen. Yeah. Uh, I got uh I kind of got my doors blown off in fantasy because of the guy they called Cheetah yeah. out in Miami. Yeah. He he, he was re- a football god basically. He ruined a lot of people's fantasy oh. week. Uh we talked that yeah. on our our fantasy football show uh yesterday. But um getting back to picks. Who won week 1? First week. And uh You got a smile on your face. I do because it's <laughs> it's perfect for week 1. We're tied up at nine. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we both of got nine. Of course. Uh, so we, we, got, kinda, we both got to go out on some limbs. Well, we did. To, yeah, so, so that's kind of the funny thing. We, yeah. we kind of went on a, a good amount of limbs last week. Um, but each one that we did, we kind of bounced back and forth. And then some of the later slate games were a little more chalky. And we went with the same picks on some of those. And those all kind of turned out the same. So it, it was just kind of funny as I was watching. Um. Some good things happened in week one. We'll talk about them as we get to each individual game. Uh, Thursday night football, another good Thursday night game. We have Minnesota taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this is uh, Kirk Cousins technically in prime time, so take that as you will. Everybody remembers what happened last year when the Eagles played Minnesota in prime time. In week two. This was exactly the same setup. It wasn't pretty. Yeah. And last week, Kirk Cousins... Is it in Philly again? Yeah. Oh, God. And last <laughs> last week, I'll say, Kirk Cousins did not look great. He threw a pick. He had a couple of fumbles. The offense overall, that Ale- that Alexander Madison thing, mm-hmm. it's going to come back to bite him. He's not a number one running back. Yeah, he didn't look too great. That's, <laughs> like, that's I, I want Ty Chandler to get more carries because I like Ty Chandler. Yeah. Um, I- I'm going with Philadelphia. It's... It's too early on in the season for Philadelphia. And Philly didn't even look all that great against New England. Now, I think New England's defense is better than uh, 
people take them for. But Philly kind of struggled, and they still Is won. it kind of concerning that Mac Jones played that great against them? I still have hope for Mac Jones, uh, so. A little yeah. bit. A, a week one game, they kind of got surprised yeah, by and, New England's offense. And I will half. say that James ba- Bradbury is in concussion protocol, I believe. Um, so maybe there's something there. Maybe Philly is uh, susceptible to a Justin Jefferson. I think anybody is, but uh, I think Philly comes out on top. I, I can't. I'm not picking Minnesota. Okay. I, yeah, I'm not going out that far. All righty, and I'm so excited. Detroit at home for the first game of the season. Hard week two. Listen, but, I'm, I'm not even gonna play around. I'm not playing the contrarian in this game. Yeah, we're both picking the Lions. The Lions. We're both going Detroit. The Lions looked good against Kansas City last week yeah. on Thursday night opener. Um, yes, they were without Chris Jones. Yes, they were without Travis Kelsey. Yes, Kadarius Tony has stone hands. But I saw that um, the stat showed Kansas City had three drops. The Lions had two. Marvin Jones fumbled in yeah, he, the red he zone. Had, he had a rough game. So, like, people are talking about how bad, you know, Kansas City was and that the Lions were handed the win or whatever. But the Lions made their fair share of mistakes. They overcame adversary. adversary and... They won the game. And now they get to go to Ford Field, and it's going to be rocking. And I'm so excited. It might be the loudest stadium in all of football. I'm not going to be there, but I'd like to see like a view of the tailgate because I know that's going to be I'll, massive. I'll have to forward you. I'll, I'll tell my brother to send uh, videos and stuff, and I'll forward them to you Okay. because uh, he will be there. Um, I haven't asked if he's gotten his ski mask yet, uh, but <laughs> – Listen, man. If everybody <laughs> – they are go CJ Gardner Johnson is about to stress out all the security in the area. Yeah, with a a mob full of <laughs> with ski masks. Yeah, this is not gonna. <laughs> it's gonna look pretty scary. Yeah. around there, <laughs> it's gonna be. It's, it's gonna look strange. It, it is, but it's gonna be. It's kind of cool, but also yeah, strange. Yeah. I think it's it could be really fun. I'm excited. I'm yeah. I'm definitely taking Detroit. Seattle looked suspect last week. It was weird. Gino took a step back. It looked like. It, it definitely was strange. Now I do you, will say, do you think they made Matthew Stafford look like three years younger? A little bit. Um, he, he threw some. He threw some really nice passes. Yeah, he got way better protection than I thought he was going to. Um, yeah. Now I will say, Seattle's offense is still volatile. They could be really good and put up some points, but they're missing both of their tackles. I don't know if you saw. They had to sign Jason Peters, who is forty-one year old. <laughs> Listen. When the game calls, you got to run back, Joey. You got to come know, back. He's on the left side. That's Aiden's. That's Aiden's side. <sighs> Three sack game. <laughs> so who's betting two plus sacks for Aiden? It could Hutchinson? be. It could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun. Um, again, I don't want to get too excited about it, but it's a good scenario. I can't wait to see what the stadium looks like. Detroit all the way. Listen, give Jameer Gibbs more touches. I think every he will. time he touched the ball, it looked like something incredible. Was he led happen. the league in missed tackles on six carries, five. Yeah, <laughs> or, or was it six missed it's tackles six on, on seven? seven? Yeah, yeah. It's yep. just he's electric. Yeah, he's gonna be fun, and he's stronger than people think. Yeah, kind of like Alvin Kamara. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Buffalo Bills. Oh boy, <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> Bills. Josh Allen, man. My 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 starting fantasy QB. That's gonna be my backup starting. I mean backup fantasy QB now. Mm-hmm. What was what's what's going on with him? I, I don't know. It it's, was I to me, it just seemed like a weird game. It's I'm like not it's gonna... like he's dropping back and he's seeing Wisconsin's field. I mean Wyoming's field again. <laughs> and he just feels like just letting it fly. Just mm-hmm. just for the fun of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean he found Stefan Diggs plenty. He did. But he, he I almost almost won my bet because of the, yeah. that connection, but he tried to force it a little too much at times, and it bit him in the butt on Monday night. Lost the Jets. Even the times when he would scramble, like why doesn't he slide more? Yeah, he, the weird. There was a time where he could have ran out of bounds, and he just stayed in. Yeah, he dove. He got like it was a like half fourth. A yard. And, it was like third and twenty. Yeah, he dove when he got to like ten yards before. I, yeah, and his he's just dive. Doing stuff. His dive only gave him like half a he, yard extra. Uh, <laughs> I I just don't understand. It it is it's weird. It's it's a little concerning, but 
I can't take I can't take the Raiders. Listen, you don't believe in the Garoppolo Raiders? I think they're going to be okay. But I feel like Buffalo is coming back with a How vengeance. crazy would it be? Buffalo's at home. How crazy would it be if Buffalo started 0-2? It would be crazy. And the Raiders started 2-0. and It would be crazy. Isn't a... But you go pick that. I'm not going to. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Isn't Jacoby Myers on uh, concussion protocol? Yeah. I think he's trending to play, but with those protocols, you never know. Yeah, I'm, I'm too afraid to pick the Raiders. <laughs> I mean, you can still change it. We got some good close games coming up, so. Go go with the Bills. You don't got to get yeah, wild. Go go with the Bills. You don't got to get it wild here. Um, and speaking of which, Baltimore at Cincinnati. This is always a fun matchup. Cincinnati looked terrible in game one. I'm going to say Shouts weather. Shout out to Jim Schwartz. Yeah. Former Lions coach. I'm, I'm going to say weather played into it. He he schemed some stuff up to make yeah. them look like children I mean, out there. Um, Miles Garrett was crossing people up. Oh, my God. <laughs> That is insane. He, he's <laughs> how do you just so nonchalantly just dribbling? Yeah, the snap goes and you just instantly beat somebody off the line. It's, I, uh, it's funny because I think because he's in Cleveland, that you know, even though people talk that he's really good, you still hear more about Aaron Donald, Nick Bosa. You hear more about Max Crosby than Miles Garrett at this point. T.J. Watt, Micah yeah. Parsons, like there's so many good rushers in the league. But for some reason, possibly the best one always goes. From day one, he has been pretty much elite. Yeah. And he kind of goes under the radar, which is weird because he's gigantic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but Baltimore and Cincinnati, Baltimore should have Mark Andrews back. If Baltimore played a good team, do they win that first game? I think so. I think they, 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 they didn't look. They didn't look great. J.K. Dobbins is now like, out for the season. <sighs> I, I feel so bad for him, man. I do and I don't. It, it I just do. keeps happening. It's like There's nothing he can control. It just keeps yeah. happening. I do because of the talent, and he's fun to watch. I don't only because of the way that he went about his offseason <laughs> because it's exactly why they he wasn't getting paid because of his previous injuries. I, I don't know. Just Maybe that's yeah. mean of me. I but. think Zay Flowers was like one of the only major positives from week one. He's yeah. the real deal. Yeah, he looked really good. Yeah. I, I think if they get Mark Andrews going, I think they're still working yeah. out this new offense. Lamar was really careless yes. with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Two and, fumbles. And he didn't look committed to his scrambles. Yeah. Like, he looked hesitant. Like, normally he just hits the gap and he goes. I didn't think that's why he fumbled is because he was kind of bouncing around like, oh, do I pass? Do I th- run? Kind of like a hesitancy. And then Cincinnati, T. Higgins was 0 for 8. He got eight targets and had zero. Points. I thought he had like 11 targets. <laughs> uh, I mean, it could have been, but he got eight. He had targets. a lot of targets and yeah. yeah. And a goose egg. Um, Jamar Chase had a very, very pedestrian game. Joe Burrow had his worst game of his career. Um, Can I, I pick first? Go for it. I which is why I'm taking the Cincinnati Bengals in week two. I figured. There is no way in any universe, in any timeline, that they're going to play like that in back to back weeks. They're at home. There will be better O line. Play Joe Burrow will drop some dimes, yeah, and the Bengals will win. And Baltimore already has some secondary injuries, uh, like they have in the past couple years. Um, but I'm gonna go with Baltimore. Uh, of course, I'm gotta pick your guys. Somewhat of a Baltimore slappy at this point. Um, but they tend to like lose weird games and then win good games. I guess they're just a fluky team sometimes. I think they're also gonna be a bounce back. This could be one of the better games of the weekend. Um, Kansas City and Jacksonville, possibly another shootout, but Lions and Chiefs were supposed to be a shootout, and that didn't really happen. Uh, Travis Kelsey on track to play, but who knows? Chris Jones did get signed, so he will be there. Um, and Jacksonville almost lost to Indianapolis. I have a question for you, Joey. Yes. Can I pick first? Go for it. Give me the Jaguars. Okay. I'm starting Trevor Lawrence in fantasy. I believe in him. Travis Etienne was basically like my best player Mm -hmm. in my fantasy lineup this week. Calvin Ridley, it'll break me. I told you, my heart hurts (laughs) that I forgot to take him. Yeah. Because it's it's obvious. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they started playing, it was obvious that he's. He hasn't missed a beat. Yeah. He is Calvin Ridley. He's going to have a really good season. Yeah. And I, I just, I believe in that Jacksonville offense. Yeah. Almost feel bad for Christian Kirk because now he's just. 
Nobody cares anymore already. He'll, he'll get his opportunities. He will, but yeah. he's already lost his time in the shine. Yeah, the, the Chiefs, they have weapon problems. Yeah. Like Bracey Rice. Mm-hmm. I think he still he has also, potential. He has potential. He's athletic. He can be explosive, but he also has a case of the drop sometimes. Yeah. Like, if Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Justin Watson are your best receivers. Yeah. I'll go yeah. with the Chiefs because I think they're going to be reinvigorated with their guys Is Chris back. Jones playing this game? I think so. I think he's supposed to be. Um, and I feel like Patrick Mahomes has got to be on just red alert. He's just going to be – he's going to be mad. Yeah. Um, and I think he's going to have his guys ready. So I'll go with Kansas City, another game that should be really exciting to watch. If you can tell Isaiah Pacheco uh, to get a few more yards for me, please, you can <laughs> tell him. Um, I'll start him and ETN. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chargers to... taking on the Tennessee Titans. Your L.A. Chargers. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I was so scared at the end of the game because they took the lead with a lot of time left. They they left in too much. It was almost two minutes on the clock. Yeah. They left in too much time. It, it, that always makes me nervous in the NFL because it just – it never works out well. Um, Chargers still look good. Um, man, their defense, though, like, I don't get it. I know – Tyreek Hill, different beast. But overall, like, River Craycraft was getting open. They, they they gave – Tua had an amazing game, but, boy, those receivers had some space. J.C. Jackson got benched in the middle – like, in the middle of the game or the third quarter or something. And a couple years ago, he's like a pro bowler. This, it's also why they call Mike McDaniel the offensive, like, whiz. Yeah. Like, the prodigy because he has the ability to just scheme guys wide open. Yeah. But, but it was frustrating. Yeah, I can understand. Another uh, Chargers tough loss. Do the Titans have an offense outside of King Henry? Ryan Tannehill, usually one of the most, like, uh, steady quarterbacks, I guess. Like, just even keel. You know what you're going to get from him. He's not going to lose you a game, not going to win you a game. He kind of lost them the game. Listen. He threw it away a lot. He got sloppy. I think very soon there's going to be time to install some Malik Willis packages. Yeah. Because you need some explosiveness. Mm-hmm. And, and DeAndre Hopkins is a year older. Yeah. What what did you really see out of, um, oh, my God, the receiver they drafted last year? Traylon Burks? Yeah. Like, what did he do? Yeah. Nick, well, I saw Nick Westbrook-Akine get more catches than him, really. Yeah. They use Ty J Spears a lot, too. So, if you have, like, a combination of you do a split backfield and you have Malik Willis, Derrick Henry, Ty J Spears – that sounds like something dangerous. With Hopkins on the outside. And that would also open up Traylon Burks, which he's a straight line speed kind of guy. Like that seems pretty good. You doable. get some really nice gadget plays in there where Chick Conquo in the middle. Yeah, if you scheme it right, you get some easy passes from a league Willis. Right. Because the run threat is so dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Listen, let's let's coach, Joey. We, yeah, I'm ready. We know what we're doing. <laughs> I'm ready. I don't know schemes. Know I don't doing. know any of that stuff, but Listen, I know the fundamentals. When Mike Vrabel eventually becomes the Ohio State head coach, we need to put in our resumes. Yeah. With all that said, the Titans are not there yet. Chargers. Chargers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Green, Bay, Green Bay and Atlanta. Arthur Smith hates your fantasy football team. Uh, I hate, <laughs> hate. I'm happy we don't have to watch full Falcons games. <laughs> because, man, see, seeing Drake London and Kyle Pitts just out there. Yeah. Seeing them out there running good routes, getting open for the most part. Yeah. I, it, the, it's And I've heard it multiple times. The worst part about all of it, Atlanta's winning. Yeah, They won some games down the stretch. They just won their first game doing what they do. But, man, does it feel like a waste of talent. Is it Desmond Ritter? Is it Arthur Smith? I don't know. For the it first three quarters, it looked like they wouldn't let Desmond Ritter throw it farther than, like, 10 yards. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Green Bay? They won. Green Bay looked pretty good. They look good, even though Chicago looks could be very bad. Yeah, awful. Mm-hmm. Matt Eberflus, I told you, was I? Yeah. What What does he do? It makes me feel better about the North. That's but yeah, sure. Jordan Love looked interesting. Mm-hmm. Their young offensive pieces look good. Yeah, they got some playmakers on defense. Mm-hmm. Christian Watson might be back, but uh, it's up in there. He's got a hamstring thing. So Quay Walker had a awesome pick six. Yeah, isn't he out too? I know he got hurt. Yeah, he got banged up. I don't remember. I don't know what his status is right now. Quay Walker is questionable. Okay. Yeah. Um, with all that being said, I'm going to go Atlanta. 
I, I think they are just on a spite tour, and it's annoying, and I'm going to hate <laughs> it. But their run game works. Tyler Azier, Bijan Robinson. Drake London's a great blocker, according to Arthur Smith. So I don't. Uh, the Falcons have to show me they can be this imitation nonsense. Yeah. Like want to be top two thousands Ravens team. <laughs> yeah. They they have to show me they can do that. And their defense is much improved. And I I like what the Packers showed week one. So give me the Packers. Okay. I just think Atlanta is going to bore people to death, and B- the other team is going to be annoyed as well. As B- much as yeah. the fans are. Bijan is a phenom. Yeah. That first touchdown was ridiculous. That stop after his ca- oh my gosh. And Tyler Algier, he still got his touches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could be a pretty really good duo. Yep. A um, couple of rookie quarterbacks in the next matchup. Colts taking on the Texans. C.J. Stroud struggled quite a bit, but Ravens' defense is solid. Anthony Richardson, I will say he looked much better than I thought he was going to in his first game. Yeah, he's listed as questionable. Uh, oh, because he got hit towards the end of the game yeah. last week. I think he should be on track to play as well. It might just be a maintenance uh, thing, but it is something to watch out this for. This is a toss-up. This really, like, what confidence do you have in other, yeah. each, either? Team? Houston plays well, but they just struggle to to find wins. Like, they, they're good at, like, shutting down quarterbacks, oddly enough. They had some good moments in that Ravens game. Mm-hmm. They just couldn't put together complete drives. Yeah. They're at home. Indianapolis has, they have those veterans that have, like, an extra, yeah. Mm-hmm. Give me the Colts. I'll go with the Texans. Like when they needed to make a play, they figured it out. Yeah. And uh, Colts' defense is still decent. I think yeah. they, they got some, like, some people. Oh, boy. Chicago and Tampa Bay. These next two games are rough. Chicago and Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Baker. They beat Minnesota. Listen, he ran through the DB and said, you got to get bigger. Yeah. Get big. That is one thing you can't knock Baker for. He's, no, he's yeah, going to give it a That's the all. reason why I loved Baker. Mm-hmm. And then there were reasons why I hated him, which is half of his career. Yeah. Is Chicago that bad? They could be. They can't be that bad. That's like 0 16. <laughs> <laughs> like every. Hey, the Packers' defense is better than. Listen, the players were bad, but the coaching was even worse. Yeah. Like, what, what are you doing with Justin Fields? Mm hmm. What are you doing with DJ Moore? He got two catches. Two. You brought him Did in. He got like two targets? Uh, maybe like four targets or something. I don't think he got targeted that much. But you bring a guy in like that, and I don't know. It's weird. Listen, give Roshan Johnson more carries. He looked really good in the fourth when things didn't matter much. Yeah. But he runs hard, and he can break tackles, and he's young. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go. Chase Claypool is becoming Casper the Friendly Ghost. I'm going to go with Chicago <laughs> just to, just as a, a – it might be a listen, Justin Fields game. It, listen, he could rush for like 150 yards and have several highlights. Because I think Tampa Bay's rush defense is still good, which would allow Justin Fields to throw them off. Mike so. Evans and Chris Godwin are healthy. They both made plays. Chris Godwin made an, an incredible catch yep. to seal the game. Give me the Baker Buccaneers. Okay. And maybe the ugliest game of the week, the Giants taking on the Cardinals. The Giants aren't as bad as they made it look. No, They're they not aren't. They're not that bad. But the Cardinals actually looked Josh Dobbs had okay. a few drives. They looked okay. He had a few drives in them. Yeah. And I'm taking the Giants. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Easy enough. Uh, San Francisco taking on the Rams, who surprisingly won their first game. San Francisco looks like a wagon. It's a surprise. Yeah. San Francisco looks really good again. Hey, look, they're all healthy. They look great. Listen, Brandon Ayuk looks like he might be taking a step. Brock Purdy is just as confident. Mm-hmm. Christian McCaffrey's healthy. Yeah, Elijah Mitchell. A big run. Elijah Mitchell is just a backup. Yeah, whenever Christian gets tired, that's when Elijah comes in. Yeah. George Kittle hasn't even had a big game yet. I, they're, they're so good. Just, yeah, 49ers. The Rams are not as good as they looked last week. Matt Stafford is probably going to look old in this game. Yeah. South South to Puka Nakua, who mm-hmm. we both liked. Yeah. And Tutu Atwell, both having really good games. Mm-hmm. They both went over 100 yards receiving. Yeah, it was, it was fun to watch. Yeah, uh, Two good defenses. We got the New York Jets and the Dallas Cowboys. <sighs> the Cowboys. The Cowboys might be really good, man. I don't know. Um, I, I think they are happy. good, 
I don't know how they get takeaways. Like Mike McCarthy said it at the end of the game, like that's what they pride themselves on. I don't know how you like I don't know how you coach that, to be honest. Like they just get takeaways. A lot of a lot of it is luck. But they've been but lucky for like you, the last like you, three years. You scheme to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. But yeah, those those plays where like he hits Saquon Barkley, the ball pops up, and then he runs it back for a pick six. Mm-hmm. There's some luck with that. Yeah. Jets, um, no Aaron Rodgers. Ah, Zach Wilson time. Oh, <laughs> God. I feel bad for Garrett Wilson. <sighs> they're, they're still going to target Garrett a ton, so he's he'll get his catches, hopefully, if the passes are, are accurate enough. They just don't push the ball downfield with Zach. I got to go Cowboys. I, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it so much. I hope the Jets win. I hope so. I'm going to go with the Flyer. I'm going to go with the Jets. Maybe something miraculous happens. Brees Hall looked. He's back. Real good. He's back. Um, Washington at Denver. That's another gross game. Russ looked pretty good. But there's still something missing. There's something just... Maybe it's just going to take some weeks for Sean Payton and that, like, all of it to gel. Mm-hmm. Washington also looks suspect. <laughs> yeah, they didn't look as good as I yeah. thought they might. But also they have the, a first-year starter. Mm-hmm. Ron Rivera isn't the best offensive coach. Who was their offense? I, I can't remember. I, well, uh, dude from, Eric Bieniemy is their offensive coordinator. What am I talking about? That was embarrassing. Eric Bieniemy is their offensive coordinator. I'm sure him and Sam are still, like, figuring out their favorites and, you yeah, know, what they're doing on offense. Mm-hmm. Is it in Denver? Yes. I'm going Broncos. Okay. Yeah. That's good because I was going to go Washington. I, th- I think they're going to figure it out. I- again, they feel like they have too many weapons. Uh, Sunday night football, Miami at New England. Again, New England's defense looked really good. This could be another shootout if Mac Jones is like – if that offense – I don't think Mac Jones can keep up. Listen, he, he looked – rejuvenated in that first game besides the the start wasn't great <laughs> yeah. the start to the game wasn't great but once they got going he he got hot mm-hmm. and he he hit some passes that he couldn't hit last year really so i'm going dolphins <laughs> yeah um i think new england's gonna actually have to run it a bit more and i, I think they will be able to the chargers ran all over miami uh so it might be a big Ramondre stevenson game uh, monday night we got two decent Decent games, divisional games. Uh, New Orleans taking on Carolina at 7-15. I am going with the upset, and I am taking the Carolina Panthers. They Bryce Young home. showed some good signs, and he also made some rookie mistakes with those interceptions. Mm-hmm. His I'm receiving go... core might not be very good. <laughs> yeah. But they could have beaten the Falcons. Mm-hmm. If not for those mistakes and some better calls, and if they just got some things to swing their way. I'm, I'm going to go Carolina. I'll go Saints because I think the Saints defense is going to give Bryce Young some problems. And then the final game, we got Cleveland at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's going to be without Deontay Johnson. They got smacked around by San Francisco, but who doesn't? Pittsburgh can't be that bad. But there was a lot of hype for them the coming Steelers in. the organization, have they come to accept their version of mediocrity? As long as they win enough games and they're not bad. As long as Mike Tomlin doesn't Mike have Tomlin a losing had, season. Has that become accept? That has become acceptable. Yeah. And I don't know if that's good enough anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, this team could be anywhere between eight. And they could still be a real, a pretty good team. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they went 11 and six at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But they could go eight and nine. Yeah. This could be a really ugly game. Both teams have pretty good defenses. Their offenses are lacking. Deshaun Watson did get some touchdowns, but he didn't look that great. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. They're home. I'm going with maybe Kenny Pickett and George Pickens have a good connection because Deontay Johnson's out, so they're going to probably force feed Pickens a little bit more. And... Maybe they figure something out. Then I will go with Cleveland. Okay. I think outside of TJ Watt, their front seven is nothing to be afraid of. And their DBs aren't much to be afraid of either. And if you get Amari Cooper enough targets, he's going to make some big moves. Yeah. Browns win 2-0. Okay. And that's your week two picks. And uh, this has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time.